Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. We have an egg polling today. So the female I'm pulling eggs from is a normal. Uh, she was bred to a male of ours that we named Funky because he came out and he should have just been a Mojave, but he was funky looking. Um, very, very, very weird looking male, okay? So we figured we'd keep him, breed him to a female, and see if there's anything else going on. Some genes that was just floating around in our collection we didn't know about, uh, or even, you know, it ha not that it happens very often, but it is possible for a new mutation to occur. So we didn't want to just sell him off and assume it was nothing. It's probably nothing, but we figured we'd try and prove it out first. So this is Molly. Uh, she Again, she's a normal. Big, beautiful snake on a nice pile of eggs. Everything I can see looks fertile, which is great. Wow, that's a big pile of eggs. Good girl, Molly. Yeah, so I'm going to set it down over here. She was super sweet last time, so I'm not envisioning a huge problem. Oh, it's okay. go. You guys know the routine. I've got a sink ready to wash her off and then I'll deal with the eggs. I think we watched the washing portion last time so maybe this time we can film the egg portion if that makes sense. Oh my goodness. So emptied out. It's incredible. But uh, she looks fine. She'll, she'll fatten right up. Um, this is natural for them. I know it's shocking to see that emaciated look, but uh, again, she hasn't been eating for months and she just poured like a third of her body weight into egg production. So these, these animals give a lot uh, for their babies. It's pretty remarkable, but she will perk right up. All right, so we've got a bin prepped, uh, scrubbed out, fresh reptichip, fresh water and everything. So she's gonna go in there and get a well-deserved rest. Um, for those of you who, uh, this is new to you, um, and it's kind of shocking maybe to see, I will explain a few things. One, there are two main reasons that we pull the eggs and don't allow them to incubate them themselves, because of course they're perfectly capable of incubating themselves. Um, the first reason we pull is for the mother's sake. She will generally not eat, um, if she is incubating the eggs herself. Um, it, it, it does happen sometimes if, if you have a really docile, trusting snake and, and she's on her eggs and you give her a real small meal, so, but it's very hit or miss. Um, and we want her to come back and start eating as soon as possible um, because of how much that just took out of her. Uh, the other reason is for the eggs. You have a higher success rate incubating in a you know, a, a sterile, perfect condition inside of an incubator as opposed to uh, maternal incubation. So for the health of all involved, it's just, it tends to be um, better for your animals if you do it this way. Uh, and I know it's sad, you know, these poor moms are curled around their eggs and we're pulling them off. I understand it, it is sad, but uh, it, they recover very quickly. Nothing in there smells like egg. That's why we bathe them. We want her to know that the eggs are gone, basically, right? And she will come right back on food uh, very quickly. So, uh, this also, though, tells you the importance of um, knowing the weight and body condition of your females. So let's say she was, uh, you know, 2,500 grams when she was gravid. I'm going to want her to get back up to around 2,500 grams before she lays eggs again. Does that make sense? So if we start the breeding season next year and she were only at 2,000 grams, I might be a little nervous um, and I might wait or even give her a year off. Whereas most likely a young, healthy snake, she's going to plump right back up. She's going to surpass her previous year's weight most likely and she'll be good to go. She should look muscular. She should look powerful, thick like a ball python adult female, right? Um, if she doesn't for some reason, if she just doesn't eat very well or, or whatever, then we would want to avoid breeding her because as you can see, it does take a lot out of them. So now we will deal with the eggs. I have my very, very wet perlite in the bottom of this, a couple of tiny holes poked. 
Uh, that's not the big giant circles that you're seeing. Those are actually sealed up old holes. We have teeny tiny little holes poked and then a light diffuser panel because I don't really want the eggs touching that sodden wet substrate. I just want the humidity rising up from it, right? So I will uh, set this actually right here. All of these look fertile. There's nine eggs there. They look perfect. But of course, I'm going to check still. So this, guys, this I will use to check for veins just to show me that there is an embryo in there um, so that I know it's fertile. Yep, sure is. I believe that is it right there. I might have to turn off lights. No, that's it. That's it. Okay. I don't know if the camera can see those veins in there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what we're looking for. And there's actually a little darker spot, and that's the actual embryo itself. Right? Alright guys, so that was awesome. Everyone has strong veins, embryos, I got them all right side up and everything. Big, solid eggs, well calcified. She did a perfect job. I'm very happy. So we will let you know about the genetics and how that all works when we cut the eggs. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. We are the Reptile Bar.